All right, looks like that's working. Perfect, we'll start there. And I think that means we're live. Hopefully the Facebook connection stays a little bit more solid this time. I hope everyone's having a great week so far. Uh, if all of this, this looks different to you, if you're watching live, hopefully you got a chance to check out my life update video. If you're listening on the podcast, check that out on my Facebook and YouTube. I just posted that. It was a little bit weird. I wasn't going to promo that, but uh, I was like, wait, it's my show. So I'm excited, and I want to introduce you to this new project that you're listening to now that I've cleverly named The Emulsion for various reasons. So basically, the live industry news show thing chat uh, didn't really roll off the tongue so nicely. Uh, That's number one. Number two is basically... An emulsion, when I was thinking about a name for the show, um, an emulsion is one of those things that pretty much took me forever how to learn how to make. I mean, I like I seriously couldn't make a mayonnaise until I was in my second year of culinary school. And then after that, when I went to Lisfaka, I had to learn how to make a hollandaise without a double boiler, which is basically the opposite of how they teach you how to do in school. So it's basically a reminder to myself that I always have more to learn, and this is my way of sharing my thoughts and perspectives while I do that in a way that's hopefully bringing a little bit of value to you as well. Gives you some, gives you some, uh, uh, some facts, some stories. Uh, and number three, um, the, what is the definition of an emulsion? It's basically bringing two things together that normally don't mix, right? Well, I mean, that's more or less of what I'm trying and maybe this comes out like a perfect sauce and maybe it splits, but at least I'll have learned from it. So what you can expect from this show, if you're new to it um, or haven't seen any of my live stream shows before, right off the bat, I cover food and restaurant industry related news, plus a little bit of stuff I found, heard about, or dug up as my interests kind of fall all over the map sometimes. It's basically what I'm excited about and what matters to me in the current week. So think last week tonight meets Scrub Street meets kind of like a call-in radio show. There's this great photography guy named Jared Polin. He has a photography channel called Frono's Photo. And he does a podcast called Raw Talk. And I really like that format of long-form, in-depth industry chat, kind of bringing some, um, bringing some guests on, um, that sort of stuff. So the reason every episode is streamed live is because I want to kind of take advantage of the small audience that I have right now. There's not a ton of people that watch me uh, kind of share my opinion on Facebook, but hopefully through podcasting it makes it a little bit more convenient. And I want there, like the whole reason I started the live streaming is because I wanted to encourage conversation around basically um, this whole thing that I'm doing. I didn't want it to be me talking to a camera about stuff. Uh, I want it to be something where people can comment and participate and get their questions answered. Um, So Basically, um, I, I want that to be a thing that sticks with this project forever. So maybe that changes to hashtagging questions on Twitter or Instagram, whatever, later. But for now, it's just you and me. So maybe we should capitalize on that. Um, so these videos are going to be saved and then posted to Facebook and YouTube. Um, so if you miss the live stream, you can catch them there. And ultimately, the Emulsion podcast, which is basically what the live stream seeks to give a little bit of behind the scenes action for. That'll be available on SoundCloud. Um, So you can listen to that wherever you are in the world on your own time. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I want to cover is something that I saw this morning. The video for it actually says it was available in December of 2016, which is a little bit strange. I hadn't heard about it until today, but it is a knife bag by the company Headley and Bennett, um, which you might know from making uh, those really trendy aprons and more recently some chef coats. Um, They're based out of LA and they got super popular for basically making aprons that um, a bunch of people, chefs on TV wore, um, a bunch of really nice trendy restaurants started using their stuff. Um, they have the really nice um, red and black ampersand logo. 
that they put on all their stuff. And basically, this new project is, um, it's called Mies, kind of based on the idea of Mies en place. Um, and what it is, is their first piece outside of aprons and chef coats. Um, I mean, like, not their first piece ever, but their first piece that they're really, like, trying to push. Um, so what it is, is that um, it, it's 100% American leather. It has a patent pending grid system. I'm reading that off of their website right now. Um, and they're pretty smart about doing this because um, there's a company called Cocoon that makes um, laptop cases with basically very, very similar technology. I, I don't know if you'd call it technology. It's basically just straps that you um, can basically uh, customize the storage for the knife bag with. So you can put things wherever you want. There's elastic straps all over the bag. It's basically a, a grid or a, a col columns of elastic straps. So you can put a tiny pastry brush next to a knife steel. And when you open the bag, the things aren't kind of flapping about, which is really convenient um, for people that carry tools of a bunch of different sizes. Um, go to their website, check out the video. Um, I'm basically going to leave a pinned comment in the show notes if you're on Facebook or on YouTube, um, wherever it's posted. And if SoundCloud gives me the option, I'm going to leave the links there too, um, just so you can check out anything that I mention uh, directly. And do a little bit more research for yourself if you're interested in anything that I'm talking about. So the um, idea is, uh, well, when when can you get it is, is, is the question. And what's the price? So... It's on their website right now. They say due to high demand, we'll start shipping the next round of pre-orders March 10th. So you got to wait a little bit. Um, and th their whole theory is everything you need and nothing you don't. So personally, I, I like the look of this bag. It's it's super sleek. The video makes it look great as it should. Um, but for three hundred and twenty dollars, which is basically the price that it's going for. Um, I'd, I'd kind of have to get my hands on one f um, before kind of splurging on something or being encouraged to recommend it. Um, I have a leather knife roll that I'm currently using, and while I don't really transfer my knives or go from kitchen to kitchen to kitchen to work, um, I think for someone who does, a knife roll like this is super, super smart, and I see the value in it. Um, Ellen the Apron Lady, if you're watching or listening, I'd love to try one out. Um, but if you want to try one out and you're interested in kind of pre-ordering because you can't get it right now, if you go to their website right now as kind of a new user and sign up with your email address, you get a 10% off uh, thing. So that'll save you a little bit of cash. Next up, we have um, the trailer for... I'm trying to auto-expose this a little bit better. There. Hopefully that looks better. I look really dark, though. Sorry guys, I'm podcast guys. I'm playing with the Facebook video here. Um, next, I want to talk about the uh, trailer that's kind of been spreading slow motion shots all over the internet today, and that's the trailer for the third season of Chef's Table on Netflix. So you'll have to check out the video. The shots are pretty annoyingly well produced. It's it's on point as usual, um, and they haven't really seemed to sway so much from their original scheme of telling the story of the chef and the restaurant, followed by some incredible cinematography and some intense music and uh, just making it look really, really nice. Um, you'll be able to find it on Netflix February 17th, which isn't too far away. Um, in typical Netflix fashion, they're just going to drop all the episodes for you, so you can watch all six uh, in binge fashion or kind of as you please. Uh, so to talk about the chefs that are in it, we have um, Ivan Orkin of um, Ivan Ramen in New York, and he also has a shop in Tokyo. Um, Joan Kwan, uh, who is a, um, she's shown in the in the trailer to be a nun, but she cooks a tasting menu, so you can kind of have her food as you as you wish if you're if you happen to be in South Korea. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of her uh, establishment. You just need to do a little bit of research, or maybe if you know of her, you can um, see her in uh, Chef's Table-like videos. Nancy Silverton, um, out of L.A. That'll be interesting to see. She's kind of been in the game for a while, but um, that'll be a nice story to hear. Um, a chef from Germany, um, Tim Rowe, 
I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not super familiar with his stuff, but uh, I mean, Chef Stable is always a nice um, way to learn a little bit, even if it's biased about a chef. Um, uh, the chef from Central, uh, Chef Martinez, um, out of Peru. So that'll be cool to see that. He's been in the spotlight for a while. And then uh, finally, Vla Vladimir Mukin uh, from The White Rabbit in Moscow. So what's my take on it? I'm going to watch it. Uh, of course I'm going to watch it. I mean, I love making movies and I love food, so this is right up my alley whether or not I like the entire basis of the project. So I basically consume it for the visuals to get a little bit of inspiration on um, how to make food look good, um, just visual food porn. Basically not the stories because I feel like those get a little bit blown out of proportion sometimes and I mean that's okay It's it makes for good TV Okay, guys, um, you're gonna have to bear with me on this next story because it's 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 a weird one <laughs> All right, that's being that's being nice. It's it's super fucking weird so eater published this story about a, a new kind of video that's sweeping the internet right now called ASMR if any of you guys have heard of this on Facebook, you should comment right now because I'd be, I'd be surprised, and I'd like to know um, what you what your initial thoughts are, or maybe if you've been in it for a while. Um, so, what is it? ASMR is an acronym for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. So basically, um, they're described as this is a, this is a quoting from Eater, brain gasms, end quote, where you you basically watch and experience these visual and audio um so it's a video with very 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 um intense sensitive audio where watching them give you tingling sensations down your spine and feelings of relaxation and comfort um who's doing this youtubers um to an audience of sometimes 200,000 people like some of these some of these videos have tons and tons and tons of views um, and the video library, if you search it on YouTube, is uh, six million videos deep. So, I'm I'm leaving the video, the link in the description. You need to check this out for yourself. Just search ASMR and your favorite food, and you're likely to find something. The two videos that they posted on the article that I watched um, were of. Um, uh, someone eating uh, three Taco Bell crunchy shell tacos and then uh, a lady eating ramen and some sushi. So these videos are normally, um, I watch I watch these for extensive periods of time. I legitimately gave them a chance. Most of them are more than 10 minutes and that was a, like about as long as I was able to last. Um, they're basically appealing to these groups of people that enjoy it, um, that want to to watch these these videos. KFC literally ran an ad for their extra crispy chicken, where they they had a guy whisper to you in the microphone, telling you about what he was eating, and then crunch into chicken, like crispy fried chicken. It's crazy. Like these people, these YouTubers, like making people feel something. And it literally appeals to people in a in a pleasurable way, and there's a market for it. So of course it's 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 a thing. Um, for me, it's hard to get relaxed with that kind of stimulation because they're the things that I associate with very closely to work and creativity and like it's stuff that I do all day. So it's very hard for me to like watch someone eating ramen and listening to the slurping noises and like their, the noodles between their teeth. And like, I want to eat it. I salivated the whole time while I was watching this girl eat ramen because I fucking love eating ramen. And it made me feel like restless and hungry. It wasn't like, it wasn't the desired response that I was supposed to get. Um, so I spent the last, I, like I basically, like my, my theory is this, I basically spent the last eight years putting food in front of people and this whole process of watching these videos and watching these people eat it, where it's like slow, like close up footage of them eating and like very sensitive noises, it basically felt like them eating me in a super weird way. I'm not sure. Let me know how you guys feel after 
you kind of experience this for yourself because it's definitely something you need to do. Um, but if you, maybe if you already partake, maybe you should just let me know what your thoughts are on ASMR. Um, this is what it looks like for all you Facebook Live people. It's literally a camera, super close up, and they they eat. They eat. That's it. Um, quick rapid fire story. Shout out to the guys at um, Alinea, Nick Conus and Grant Atkins. They both posted photos this week of some construction happening. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, they, they, they continue to put out really smart places in the Chicago area. So... Keep an eye out for that one. Um, this is off of, uh, I think, Grant's Instagram. What's up, Hubert? Um, so the next conversation I want to start, and I really see myself continuing to have this conversation during the show because it's something that we're seeing more and more of these days, and that is restaurant closings. So, and I'm not talking about like three quarters of restaurants closed within the first year, statistics or any of that shit. I'm talking about like well-established, ranked, beloved institutions closing their doors for good. You might have seen my Facebook uh, fan page that I, where I posted an article from Grub Street about um, Anissa closing. And literally when I was doing research for this show, I saw Tom Colicchio is gonna close Craft Bar. Um, so the question has to be asked, right? Why are these chefs, these veterans to the industry and the entire profession having to shut down? And in, I mean, in short, there's no quick answer. So there's, there's so many factors, minimum wages rising. In New York City, especially rent is getting astronomically high. So the ref, the article from Colicchio uh, references that his rent is $60,000 a month. Uh, now, uh, Colicchio's landlord raised it by 50%. And for Anita Lowe, wages factored in. Um, so she quotes, we're a small business. I don't make that much money in a year. And when my bookkeeper did the math, when minimum wage went from $5 to $7.50, that was over $50,000 a year extra for us. So yeah, that speaks for itself, end quote. So she basically, she also basically talks about being a solo owner of a place. And she says, quote, I don't know how you make retirement owning just one restaurant. So while I don't really have an all, uh, like a one size fits all solution for this whole problem, um, I want to start this conversation because as a chef and someone that desires to have a business that serves people food and provides experiences, I really think it's important to know that this is happening. Um, I told Chef Chris at Lee Svaka when I became a sous chef in 2015 that the two things I wanted to learn in 2016 for the year that I was committed and that I wanted to be there was to learn how to lead people, number one, and number two, get a real hard look at the numbers involved in having a restaurant because let's be real, the small tidbits and little cookie cutter equations that you get during school or along the way as like tips and tricks from your sous chef or maybe your executive chef or whatever, don't really give you any experience to solve the problem of like, hey man, our food cost is at 31% and I need it to be at 26%. How do you do that? So it's real, it's 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 real and it's, it's a problem and let's, um, let's go back, perfect. So while I'm not saying that food cost is causing all these places to close, I want to encourage education and awareness to the business side of the entire operation of having a restaurant. Because I also see a huge problem of specialization in restaurants for good reason. So they're built and they start uh, with the intent of serving good food to people. And the problem there is when your landlord tells you there's going to be a 50% rent increase, what do you do? Um, so look at it like this. If um, Sharpie, I'm picking up a Sharpie because this is the closest thing to me. Um, if Sharpie's cost in one aspect of their business went up 50%, and like, so basically they have two options, right? They can cut costs or increase revenue to pay for, like to basically play within the margins that they budget for. They can come out with a new product, increase distribution through ads, or even like increase prices and literally tell people we have to increase prices because of rising expenses costs. And that's something that you see 
on the reg. You see it all the time. Companies that do that. So what? But like the the problem for restaurants lies in what do you do as a restaurant? Come up with a new dish, right? Like that's not enough. You're you're like also you're trapped within the four walls that you're located in, like space wise. Where basically you're you have a cap on how much you can make. So look at that look at that article with Anita Lowe. She literally references the fact that when they eliminated tipping, they lost a lot of business. It, like you can't raise your costs and meet the expectation of the market because basically what I'm saying is there are problems and modern 2017 solutions are what are gonna separate the winners from the losers going forward. And I'm interested in presenting some solutions and seeing how it plays out when the time comes. Okay, rant over. Switching it to something a little bit quick and lighthearted before we start to close it out here. Um, I want to cover, I wanted to give a shout out to um, a video by Simone Geertz, teaming up with the guys at Megabots to create a giant robot chef that um, she gets to drive and it basically chops a head of cabbage and a whole fucking oven with eight, in, eight foot knives of doom is what they're calling it. It's a really entertaining video, you should check it out. Um, but the last story um, I wanna cover in this show that I'm calling The Emulsion um, is always gonna be something that's outside of the industry. Uh, I think it's kind of a trap to get trapped in the bubble um, of the restaurant industry because there's a lot of stuff going on outside um, and a lot of stuff that can either inspire you or kind of provide a little bit of escapism. Um, so for me, this week, um, it's the movie Hidden Figures. I watch it at my house and I'm notoriously bad at watching movies or TV shows at home. Um, I find it much easier to stay engaged when I'm like in a movie theater for some reason. I don't really partake in Netflix or HBO with a few exceptions. I'm looking at you, uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, but this movie was awesome. Uh, for me, it brought out a lot of laughs. It had all the right nerdy moments. The acting was fantastic, even from uh, Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. Uh, still being a nerd, but in a serious way, if that makes sense. Um, it's a great story of empathy. Um, it's up for an Oscar. Most theaters are still showing it, so definitely check it out if you, um, basically if you like anything related to math, science, or human beings in general. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of The Emulsion. Expect new episodes every week. Um, I'm kind of working on getting a schedule down for this just to make sure that the live streams can be a little bit more anticipated. Um, maybe I should close with a question that I have for you, and that is um, if you made it this far, maybe some immediate feedback, um, what you liked, what you didn't like, the format. Um, basically, also maybe if you could comment how you consumed it, that would be a really... Um, easy way for me to kind of see where the attention is and where people like to be consuming the show. Um, so whether that's podcast, YouTube, or Facebook. Um, but I look forward to hearing from you guys. Um, thanks in advance. I'm Justin Kana. Have a good one.